but I, you know, you got to stop me from talking. Okay, so we're on the uh, we're on the black belt portion of the course. Um, we've just taken a three week break. We're gonna meet every other week online. Um, I think meeting meeting every week would probably be a little bit too intense. Um, we've got really sort of you know finishing out the more steam material. So the big chunk is this design of experiments thing that you guys were sort of in or in the middle of. Um, we're gonna finish that out over the next two weeks. And then we've got two more sections to hit after that, the improve and the control. And then really I think the, the thing we wanna do is wrap up our um, uh, mini projects. And I also think, you know, you guys, as, as opposed to the green belt students, most of you guys seem to want to um, maybe proceed on to certification. So as opposed to the green belt folks, you know, maybe I expect, you know, maybe 10% of those people to go on for certification. In black belt, you know, we're probably up in the, you know, the 80% of you guys are going to want to maybe go forward. So to the degree that we can talk and answer questions about how to make that successful, how to position for that, um, I would be happy to do that. Okay, so that's my that's a little bit of an introduction. Any any questions or expectations or hiccups from you guys as far as what we need to do or what the plan is? You guys okay with that? Okay, we're good. Yeah, it's nice when you only have you know this many picture frames. You know, at least I can see everybody's face as opposed to the. Uh, the countless masses that aren't there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I put together a few slides to talk about. But anytime you guys want to jump in, ask some questions. Um, like I said, if I'm not you know totally up on being able to answer them, I could certainly get you a, a response back either in the interim two weeks or when we meet back uh, two weeks from now. So I'm going to go ahead to share screen here. And let me go to uh, slideshow. Okay, so so the way this splits because that um, design of experiments piece is thirty six out or thirty three hours, um, we try to take it into chunks. So I actually split this between two sessions to talk about design of experiments. But this is the real differentiator um, for black belts versus green belts. So as a black belt, you're going to potentially be asked to do some sort of design and experiment um, for your employer or, or for your team or coach somebody on how to do design and experiments. And, you know, to be honest, as an engineer, I guess I was probably more the victim of designs of experiments uh, run and put together by other people than an actual designer. Um, and as I started to learn about design of experiments and the kinds of things you could do, it really sort of just blew me away as to the kind of power and the kind of things that um, you can do with this stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of excited about, you know, having this in my toolkit. I'm excited about you guys having it in yours. So here we are on uh, the 28th. We're talking about the first half of design of experiments. We'll finish that up um, next time. Then two weeks later, we'll be hitting um, improve. Two weeks later, control. The, um, at the end of um, November, so on November 30th, we'll do a little report out on your mini projects. So we'll go ahead and you guys at that time will share your, um, your black belt stories with regards to your mini projects. This half of the course, um, I'm not planning on bringing in any guest speakers. Um, I will, um, and I'm going to write myself a note here. Um, we do have a, a pretty stellar lineup of guest speakers who are going to be talking to, the, to my Greenbelt class. That Greenbelt class meets on Thursdays from 12.10 to 2 o'clock. And I've asked my guest speakers if I could put out a publicate or a broadcast to all the Central Coast Lean distribution. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, tomorrow, we've got Sam McPherson, 
who is uh, head of the Lean Leadership Academy. So Sam um, actually is a, um, I was gonna say Green Belt, he's actually a Green Beret, but he uh, does a lot of work with special forces. Um, he actually runs workshops in the Leadership Academy for the special forces operations for the US government. Um, and he started the Lean Leadership Academy, does a lot of consulting you know, worldwide. He's gonna be calling in from North Carolina. So if you wanna catch, uh, catch Sam, see what he has to say about Lean Leadership, I'd encourage you to tune in tomorrow. We're gonna to use the same link that we're using now. So it's gonna be the same Lean uh, training link and you can go ahead and you can uh, pick up any one of these speakers, all right? Um, the online exam, I know I was talking to, uh, I was talking to Matt uh, Reibold. Matt, actually, um, Matt was actually uh, part of a green belt class. Let's see, hey Matt, do you have your, your microphone on? Yeah, I do. Go ahead and mute that. There we go. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I was trying to introduce Matt to you guys a little bit. So Matt was in a previous green belt class. So what he had to do during the green belt sections that we were going through, he just needed to redo the quizzes and catch back up to where you guys are. And actually, because he didn't attend the class and there wasn't real good communication on my part, um, he actually went through and finished, I think, all the sections um, in more steam. So he's about ready to take the, uh, the final exam test, but he's gonna attend the rest of our sessions, trying to get a line, um, get a little bit better feel for the material. I'm gonna suggest that as soon as you finish with the material, you can go ahead and take the, the practice exam and the final exam if you like. But let's go ahead and target that um, you're all gonna be finished with that final exam by the end of the week of the 11th. So if you see down here with the final exam, I've got the 1211. So let's say that you know sometime between that Sunday and the following, um, the following Friday, you're gonna be complete with your final exam, okay? And that's a five hour final exam. We'll certainly talk about that more in some other sessions. Any questions about how the, how the class is gonna go or how we're gonna run over the next few, uh, few months. Let's see, Judy, you had a question? Yeah, I just wanted to check. You said we could tune in to listen to the guest speakers. Yeah. Um, if, uh, if we have a, a section that, you know, from earlier on in this class that we think we would benefit from hearing more information on besides just reviewing the uh, the videos and the uh, notes and things. Right. Um, it, may we stay and listen? Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, the, the setup is essentially the same sort of thing that we've been doing in the summer. So, um, yeah, so we'll do a little administrative intro. We'll get the guest speaker on. They'll be on for like 30 or 40 minutes. And then I'll, I'll wrap up with some slides. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow we're going right back to the beginning, sessions one and two again. So, uh, so if you missed something there, you're welcome to just to hang around and listen. You're also, you know, encouraged to contribute, to, to talk, uh, ask questions and things like that. I think by having you guys there, it'll bring a richness to the class. Um, and with regards to questions of our guest speakers, some of these guys are people that you have already heard. But uh, some of them, like Sam, are going to be brand new, and you could probably get a lot out of uh, the kind of things he's going to say. All right. Um, let's see. I think Cassie had her hand up, and then uh, and then Dominic. But Cassie, do you have a question? So uh, two questions. Well, how? What is the passing rate on the black belt exam? Because I was kind of going through the Martins, feeling pretty good about all of it until I hit the hypothesis analyze. Equations yeah. and math. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, so, so, um, so, so you have to get eighty percent or better to pass, right? Um, it's a hard test. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, you got to study. You got to be prepared. There's um, 
there's knowing the material and feeling really good, you know, about hypothesis tests, but there's also being able to be a, a, what I would call like a fast finder because it is open book and open note. Um, if you're just very familiar with the Moore steam training, you know where to look things up, you know, you've got the videos or whatever you need sort of queued up in the background and every once in a while, instead of taking, you know, three minutes a question, you take five because you've got to do some extra checking. Um, I, I don't think, I don't think it's, it's like a super time crunch, but, but it will test your knowledge. The other thing is if you're, you're planning to go, go on, right, and it's more than just passing the class. So, you know, typically, um, I think I put in there, um, you've got to get like a, a 70% or better overall in the class to, to sort of uh, legally say um, I passed a Lean, uh, Lean Six Sigma Black Belt training course at Cal Poly. You got to have an 80% or better across the board to go forward for your, your Black Belt certification. Um, if you don't get an 80% the first time you take the exam, there's a one month cooling off period, and then you can take it again. It's a different test, different questions, but you do get to get two shots at it, okay? Did you know, so the question was, what's the pass rate, 50%, 60% the first time? Or you just don't know? Um, you know, I, I'd have to look it up. It, it's, it's way better than 50%. Um, you know, I may be, so when we do the, the black belt training, you know, so, so typically say if we had 10, we would maybe have two people that didn't pass, you know, out of the, out of the 10. So, so maybe, uh, you know, 80% pass rate, I would think would be a good estimate. But there's always one or two people that, you know, for whatever reason struggle or, or can't, can't deal with it. But, um, we're well, generally pretty successful if you know the more steam material. Okay. Dominic, you got a question? Yeah, a couple. Um, now I'm going to try to remember my first one, but uh, let me jump to the one I do remember is uh, for the uh, mini projects, um, I've had to completely retool. <laughs> okay. Uh, and that's just because of the uh, the expectations in my, uh, my obviously job here. Um, okay. So is that that's is that a problem as long as it's still the demand? Can I use two two two? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you need to to adjust, so generally my my strategy is I ask you to turn in that draft project charter to make sure that you're sort of got something in mind and thinking. Right. But I fully expect that you know a lot of people change. Yeah, that one's. And you don't you, you don't need changing for, for uh, you don't need my approval to change. Okay. All right. Perfect. Um, and uh, just for clarification on that final test, so you said 80% uh, uh, on the actual test. Right. You say two things. So there's 70% in the class, right. but there's 80% in the class in order to For move same. on? Right, right. To be qualified to be certified, you have to get 80% or better on the test. Okay. So it's just a test, not 80% in the class in order to move on. Yeah, it is 80% in the class. Also, so, so another kind of gentler way to express that, you need a B minus, you know, across the board. So you need a 80% uh, on the mini project. You need to get at least 80% on the more steam quizzes. You need to get at least 80% on the final exam test. So on all the elements of the class, in order to be qualified to go on for certification, you got to get, you got to get that 80% level. The only two places where people have stumbled is I've had people get, you know, like a 78 on their, on their mini project. And what I do then is I ask them for a corrective action. Sure. So do something that gets me those other two points back. You know, you correct this answer or whatnot. And then the same thing, like I said, once in a while, there'll be somebody who will fail the final exam. Actually, um, uh, let's see, I, I guess I can't say it. Um, because I only have one person that's ever gotten their black belt certification, mm. but uh, you know she had to take the test more than once. Yeah. So, okay. All right. Um, and then, do we still have the opportunity for that floating extra credit with the poster? Is that the? Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, sure. sure. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that was it. Thank you. Okay, good. Yeah, I would love to get that poster too. So, um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, I'll go back to share screen. Let's go ahead and move on here. Okay, so um, I, you know, I'm going to stop sort of tracking us as far as the sort of percent correct and on time. You know, our sample size got real, really low with only five people in the class. But I just want to share with you, this is the way things wrapped up with the green belts. Um, one thing that sort of applies to stuff we're talking about, so here are what the, the scores were on the, uh, the average score for the, the mini project and the final exam. So mini project, the average score was 83%. Final exam was 84% for green belts. And average on final class grades, um, with you guys sort of out of it, um, was 85%, okay? And I don't, I don't expect you guys to do a lot worse than that, all right? Okay. Um, just uh, some, some tips and tricks. I, I guess one of the, one of the things, um, well, let me, let me do a little, little poll here. How many of you guys have access to another statistical software package that does design of experiments like uh, Minitab. So if you go ahead and like raise your hand if you have access to another type. Okay, so you're still hand raised, Dominic. Okay. And then, uh, let's see here. All right, so just Dominic. Okay. So all the rest of you guys are, are pretty much tied at the hip to the, to the engine room. Um, what, what I'm showing you here is actually a display from Minitab. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know, I guess if you went to Minitab, I think you could get uh, like a 30-day tr free trial on Minitab. So if you're kind of in the, you know, if you're going to your final exam and you want something else to study, you might um, sometime around uh, you know, November 1st go get a free copy of Minitab and then sort of play around with it a little bit because it'll give you a sort of another perspective on design of experiments. But it will be real compatible because essentially the engine room uh, look and well, engine room feel, the engine room logic. Not necessarily the look and feel, because that, that look and feel of engine room is pretty distinctive. But the, the logic behind, you know, um, how this is done and how they sort of think about it, all those people came from Minitab or, or background in Minitab. And Minitab is, is I think, is, is real sort of useful, especially down here at this sort of help button. So... I think the, the Minitab help stuff is, is uh, probably better than the engine room help thing. So the engine room, the help, you have to sort of watch the tutorials. Um, doesn't give you a lot of real, you know, example outputs and things to read, but the Minitab helps do. So um, you might want to check that out um, at some time, especially if you're, you know, Cassie, if you're starting to feel like you're not as comfortable as you should be or whatnot, um, that might be one way to go, all right? Uh, questions about that? I'm trying to, you know, we're really just, when, when you're doing that uh, final exam and trying to pass that, yeah, you're gonna wanna know the, the mini tab, or excuse me, the, the more steam and the engine room stuff pretty well, but it's open book, open notes, open other types of software, um, you know, if you had, you know, access to things, you know, might help you get one or two more questions right, okay? All right, moving on then, let's see here. Um, okay, so as far as like design of experiments go, I, I don't, what I don't wanna do is get so, you get so deep into the mechanics that you lose sight of the big picture. And I think one of the more valuable things you could do as a black belt coming in and helping a team or helping an organization 
uh, with solving some sort of problem is, uh, you know, keeping that, that big picture perspective. So, um, you know, don't be the, the kind of black belt that just sort of all of a sudden, you know, doesn't sort of explain to people what's going on and just sort of jumps into the mechanics of uh, executing a design of experiments. So obtain as much information as you can about the problem and process. You guys got to go to Gimba, right? So that's one of the, the rules for lean folks. You're not going to do this remotely from some uh, office somewhere. Um, get buy-in from all the parties. One of the things that uh, I think doing a design, of a true design of experiment especially in non-manufacturing areas, is going to be a relatively rare thing because they tend to be pretty expensive to do. And, you know, if you've got a pretty good hunch on what the solution is and you use some other tools like cause and effect diagrams or um, Pareto charts and you sort of know what the issue is, you might instead decide, well, we're gonna go ahead and make this change and run it for a while and compare some before and after data and make your judgment on that as opposed to creating a, a bunch of separate factors and assigning you know, random lots and that sort of thing. So I think it's relatively rare and it's pretty expensive to do but it is very powerful. So when the stakes are really high um, and you're looking at really big investments for changes or what you're going to do, um, you're going to want to consider um, using a, a design of experiments approach and getting all the parties to agree and buy in that they're going to go ahead and do this and sort of abide by the results or participate in the process is a good thing. Um, be clear about the criteria. Using screening experiments, um, you've seen the thing about, you know, full factorial experiments uh, can get pretty, uh, pretty big, pretty intensive, pretty fast. And so using, you know, half factorial and quarter factorial experiments as screeners to sort of weed out and try to focus on what you ought to be looking at is, a, is an important thing to be able to do, especially as a black belt. Um, you know, walking into a, a situation. Um, analyze the effect of significant factors, and then sort of a big thing, um, and it's like I say on so many of these things, the analysis is not the decision, right? So you're gonna go do design of experiments, it's gonna pop out with a significant factor. You're gonna say, okay, this needs to be high, this needs to be low or whatnot. You need to do some sort of confirmatory experiment or confirmatory test before you roll that out, um, just to be sure. Okay. Any questions about that? Um, does anybody, Dominic? Did you know? I'm just going to go to you because you're in manufacturing. Are you guys doing any design of experiments type things, or have you participated in that? Yeah, um, it's been a while for me uh, here. Um, we have a couple going on right now. We have a uh, a process where we apply a decorative laminate on top of our composite structures, and we're seeing uh, multiple failures. So really difficult to kind of pinpoint the uh, those failure modes. We've got a lot of uh, scientists you know in the room and you know what are these factors oh yeah it's a, okay. it's a blast um so they're in it now uh i don't know the specific details i'm not too involved uh, so right, right. i'm occupied somewhere but uh definitely a need for it for sure in manufacturing when you get into special processes as well uh, i've seen it before in use so uh okay. yeah uh, it, it was it was real big in silicon valley with uh, wafer fab manufacturing uh, anybody else have you know exposure or been threatened with one of these things or anything? Cassie, you or Judy or um, I don't know, Matt. Are you are you guys doing anything at uh, or do we lose Matt? Looks like we lost Matt. Yeah. Um, any 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 uh, exposure? No. Okay. All right, well, um, let's see, there was one other thing I wanted to, to say about that. So confirmatory tests, yeah. 
No, it's it's a uh, it's a pretty powerful thing though. So hopefully you'll you'll get the uh, you get the um, joys of, of participating in one of these things. Maybe even be the designer of one of these things at some point. Okay. Um, so I'm just gonna um, rather than sort of walk through a, a, a challenge tonight. I'm, I'm looking at this sort of being our our warm up maybe. I'm just gonna throw out a challenge to you guys. There is a simulation on Morstein, uh, Rocket Pizza. And what I wanna do is next time when we meet two weeks from now, um, let's compare recipes. So what I want you to do is go ahead and run that simulation, do your design of experiments and see what you can come up with and we'll see who has the best tasting pizza and who has the most consistent pizza, all right? Um, let's see, has anybody, has anybody already run this yet or used that as one? I think there's several different you know, simulations at the end of this chapter that you could potentially do. And you need to do it at least one. I think Rocket Pizza is a pretty good one. Any other? Okay, Judy, do you have your hand raised for on yeah. focus? Yeah, go ahead. I'm just wondering if this is some kind of a conspiracy or something because first we had to clean and now we have to cook. I mean, now come on. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, um, and I, and I'm hoping that you know when they uh, when they put together the simulation, they 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 had somebody knew something about making pizza so that the answer is you know aligned with what reality is. So maybe my pizza making will get a little bit better, but uh, yeah, there, there's uh, it's probably a little bit of a conspiracy. Yeah, we're, we're trying to do this to you, Judy. Okay. <laughs> All right. So um, so that's a that's a for next time thing. Um, let's see. And I guess you know just to get even sort of more conspiratorial for for Judy. Um, there's uh, two things I thought were pretty good for hidden gems. One was uh, applying design of experiments to microwave popcorn. It was a pretty good little sort of article to sort of give you a feel for things. And then also the um, two-level design, design of experiments for you know how to you know uh, machine make bread. So using a bread making machine. Um, I think you know when you're when you're a black belt and thinking about, you know, well, how do you, how do you make this real for companies as you're working on things or show them, you know, maybe how effective it is. Um, if you don't have the situation like Dominic does where you've got to do, you know, some sort of uh, in the production line type of experiment where it's really straightforward, doing something simple and easy like, uh, making popcorn or muffins or, or something like that can be an effective way to sort of learn by doing, all right? Um, I think that's, that's about all I have um, for tonight. And I'm going to kind of go, uh, go ahead and go off of, how do I? Trying to figure out how to do my stop share. There we go. I found it. Found the button. Okay. So um, that's that's kind of it for tonight. Um, you guys have sort of gotten into it. You know, Cassie, I, I know you're sort of struggling a little bit, but what kind of what kind of questions do you have that so I can be a little bit more directed in, in what I'm I'm talking about here? Cassie, what's your question? Um since the class is kind of ending early, I just didn't know if you have time to talk about, since I'm in the middle of doing a three-session Kaizen. Oh, yeah. I, I would love to talk about a three-session Kaizen. So, so let, let's just sort of hold that for now. Let's see if there's sort of any other questions before we, before we sort of go in that direction. And Cassie, are you okay if people want to hang around for that discussion? Sure. I'll air out my dirty laundry. <laughs> okay, good. Um, any any other questions? Um, more on the the more steam material at this point. It, just to, just to go back, Eric. Uh, can you go back to the slide? I'll, I'll like taking my notes, and I know they're available online. Can you, do you mind going back to um, yeah. you know, six points? Uh, just I, if I can quickly capture, write down. 
uh, five again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just posted this uh, this little slide set earlier today, so it's on the uh, the Fort and Moodle. So, okay, okay, cool. Um, anything else for anyone? Okay, let's talk about Kaizen events. Um, just uh, so, so I'll sort of share a little bit before before Cassie gets started. Um, I'm actually doing a workshop up in Sacramento next week on. Tuesday and Wednesday, and we're going to talk to a bunch of administrators from across the CSU. And the objective of the workshop is to try to get people comfortable with facilitating improvement with their own department. Kind of the, the current state, or our view on the current state, is we do these sort of big overview workshops about what lean is. And we say it's got to be cultural transformation, and you're doing small experiments, and you do Kaizen events, and um, you're, you're teaching people problem solving, and people get a little bit overwhelmed, right? And it's like, okay, tell me just sort of the first steps on how I get started. And um, so we're gonna we're gonna work with a bunch of people, try to see if we can actually get them once they walk out of the workshop to go out and actually implement something, um, maybe a Kaizen event sort of. Uh, mini Kaizen event site process in their office, but um, we'll, see, we'll see how effective that is. But Cassie, switching over to you, what do you get yourself into? Remind us. So, um, operate, operating room turnover times um, and hospitals. So, um, you want to be quick, you want to be efficient because you're eating up the doctor's time, you're paying for the doctor's time, and you want all of the cases to end on time so you don't have overtime and people are not staying over until like 7 o'clock at night. So right. um, it's kind of a change. Oh, um, um, it's kind of a, it's a changeover project of what it is. It's not manufacturing. It's people, right. but it's project and so they said um we want to do a kaizen or we want we want improvement seen in three months and get it together and so i've had i've been talking with eric about how to do a kaizen and because i'm doing it on my own okay, um, and cool. I've, I've done session one define, right. and i've done session two which is measure and analyze, and next week I'm gonna have my session three. So, so this is like the session three gets you into sort of brainstorming, identifying problems and, and brainstorming solutions. Is yes, that, and yeah. it's really hard because in session two, they were already going there. And so I really had to try to hold, not hold them back, but you know, it's very hard in a group when they have ideas to say, okay, let's go through the process. And I did say, you know, there's, it's important to go through the process. This is the process we're going on. Yeah, you yeah. know, we're in for allies improvements next time. But I didn't want to lose the idea, yeah. so we just write it on after, just yeah, to like not little, lose it. Like but I didn't. Parking lot sort of thing. I didn't, yeah, I didn't, like, I didn't allow for like a 15-minute discussion. Improvement. If you had an idea, I would throw it here too. Actually, it's very hard to keep the group going through the processes and not jumping yeah. ahead. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think I think that's fine. I, I think one of the things is um, you got to work with your um, your audience, your team, and if they you know they need to say those things or they need to talk about the six and so write them up on a flip chart you know let them sort of vent a little bit and then moving them on forward i think that's a that, that would be the approach i would use so i think you're right on with that yeah um so we have frontline staff there in, in the meetings and what so also what helped me and I would encourage everybody if you're doing this. So there's the Gamba Academy that we have access to. Okay. They have videos on doing a whole Kaizen, like what the leaders should be doing, what the timelines are should be doing. And so I really encourage whatever you're doing to go into the Gamba Academy because I think I watched the whole entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> then um, 
I didn't realize the first session was so much teaching. Right. I mean, it's teaching five S. It's teaching them to think differently. It, right. And I, I had the objective think differently, and I was upside down. I made them read it upside down, like yeah. the first slide, because they just have to think differently. Because right. first of all, they want to people want to point out money, and so we had the Ten Commandments. But we went over the five S's, we went over the seven ways, and we went over change it over about internal, right. moving things to internal, moving things to external so they can start thinking. Right. Like what I said, they have to start thinking this way and not just me. Exactly, exactly. So that's all the first session is, was teaching them these three elements and then coming up, outlining a charter. So that's all we do. Did you give them some chances to practice on some things too? So the Gamba Academy, I learned the letter game. I'm sorry, say again? They have like a letter game. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For so five have, S. Yes, for 5S. So um, I had them spell turnovers. So you give them lots of letters. Yeah. Letters. It was hilarious. It went really well. You get letters all mixed up in big alphabet, and you say spell turnover, okay, go. So um, we did the times, and then they had to sort or get all of all unnecessary waste, and then we timed them. And it was funny because um, one of the Ds was a punched out, so it was a defect. So I pointed out the defect. And then, um, then they organized the letters, and then uh, one of the teams, thought they had to spell it out as many as they could. So they did it three times. And I said, how much time did it take to over-processing? So you just did over-processing. How much time did that take you to do it three times? Yeah, wait so a So it was hilarious. I was so happy they did over-process, over-processing. Yeah. So then they got it down. I think they went from like 20 seconds to seven seconds. Yeah, well, cool. Yeah, it was a five S game. So so what are, you, what are you thinking going into the third, uh, you know, the third session, is there something we can help you with or? Um, oh. um, are you feeling good about it? Are you nervous or what, what's the, is it? It's, yeah, because it's so much work to do one of these things and it went one, it went back to back weeks. Yeah. I didn't realize how much time, cause I didn't have it already set up. I didn't have the PowerPoints already done or the games done. So I had to do all the research myself. So I just didn't realize how much time in seven days between each one it takes. Right. Yeah. So I, the big mistake I did is the physicians. And so we had physicians invited and they didn't show up. Yeah. First, that's typical because four hours of their time so they're just not going to show up so then i called them personally to ask to only show up for one hour and they didn't show up so um the group is really frustrated about that and so they said that they would the group would even meet at dinner like do a dinner with the doctors yeah so and then some of the improvement ideas for like we did visual management that, and uh, first of all, we needed, we're going to do a 5S on the equipment room. That was already one of the improvements because right. I did a gamble walk and they showed me their equipment room. And um, anyways, it yeah. needs to be sorted and ordered in 5S and that will help a lot. But the hard thing in the hospital is that regulations, like we wanted to do visual management of placement things in the room, but yeah. we can't tape because we can't have adhesive. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of infection control processes. And so and then I said, well, why don't we paint the floor? And they're like, well, we can't do that either because it's the operator. So I'm just like, oh my goodness. I feel like there's just things I want to do and sometimes that yeah. it's hard because. You, you, you know, we ran, ran into similar sort of things in clean rooms, right? Where there's, you know, you're not allowed to have paper in a clean room or, or things like that, right? And I think part of it is there are probably people there that know the stuff you can use or, you know, and I think you're on the right step. You got to engage them in, you know, they've got to be the ones that are thinking that way and solving the problem. Right? Like we need to have a visual management system here. What do you think? Like, how can we do that? And it's not you coming up with the idea 
you know, and, and taping things up, you know, they need to say, we can use this type of, you know, stuff to do it. I don't know. Yeah, they're just so quick to say, oh, that's great visual management, but we can't do that. And I'm just like, oh, you're bugging me yet. Yeah, I think you need, you need to ask the question a little differently, right? So, so you need to ask it so it engages them. Dominic, you have a, a suggestion? Yeah, just a, just a comment, Cassie, because um, I face it too, right? When you have, you bring a large group of uh, people, people, yeah, you know, <laughs> into a discussion like that, you know, uh, going back to, and it's funny, Chester brought it up, uh, it's it's the philosophy of the Nemawashi, right? So looking into that, really having sidebar discussions with these, maybe if you have one or two individuals that keep, you know, kind of, chopping at your improvement ideas or the team uh, chemistry uh, might be beneficial to have those sidebars with them uh, and try to get them to understand maybe a little bit specifically of what the group is trying to do. I, I think too, maybe Cass, don't, don't, um, don't set your sights too high. I think you only need like one or two physicians to get it. And, and I don't know if you've sort of, you've probably got a feel for who those guys are, right? and bring them in and, you know, they'll be the ones that'll have the most successful turnaround time in the operating room. They'll be the ones that work best with, uh, with the team because they understand how the mechanisms work and that kind of thing and use them to help you demonstrate success and maybe get some of the other physicians on board that way. Yeah, and it's hard because some of the operating rooms will go from a neural, neuro case to urology case to an ortho case so it's not turning over some most sometimes it is i would say maybe half the time it's turning it over to the same physician so that's helpful but it's hard when it's turnover between different physicians yeah because they have to work together or know the system to to be able to make it work yeah I, you know i guess another thing that that works well like maybe you sort of have some experience but when Upper management, and they put the physicians in that same sort of category, when they see how happy and engaged and, you know, proud the people are of the changes that they made and the systems that they've made, um, they'll, they'll melt a little bit and, um, and maybe help you get, you know, a little bit more buy-in. Um, yeah, so, so, so I, I would try to try to go for that play. And we get, now we got Matt, you got your video on. Way to go. You have, to, you have to go outside to get that to work? Well, I was using my MacBook, and apparently uh, my MacBook camera isn't working or, like, yeah. is broken or something. I don't know. So okay. right, um, we'll, we'll, I went, and now I'm using my iPhone. All right. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you. So Cassie's uh, walking us through. She's doing a Kaizen event. And, uh, so we did a flow chart uh, um, of the process and of the times of a case. And then we did a fishbone cause and effect diagram when they left. And then I gave them, um, I, before when they were walking out of the room, I gave them all red dots to put on which part of the fishbone diagram they thought that was the most time. Yeah, yeah. So they did that, and I have pictures and stuff like that that I took. Yeah, yeah. The next time was to drill into the improvements, and then I was thinking about doing a priority matrix, or like, what are the? I want them to identify the quick wins, like which ones are going to take the longest, which ones are we going to hit the most barriers with. Right, 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 right. Into boxes and do the ones that land in the easiest box first. Right, so yeah. like the, the impact effort matrix, is that where? Um, but also, as long as it's, it's hitting the main root causes to fix the issue. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 so Matt, do you, do you, like, so, so do you have experience with like an impact effort matrix or have you ever tried to use that? Um, not really exactly that. Um, usually whenever I talk to my boss about um, an area of improvement or uh, a project that I want to start, um, usually we just go through a lot of different uh, types of scenarios and a lot of different types of solutions that 
that we could pos that could possibly solve uh, a problem. Right. And uh, usually we try and identify the low hanging fruit, right? Yeah. Um, the 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 solutions that are going to be uh, the quickest to implement, the uh, the ones that are going to have the least amount of downtime, that are going to that are going to going to be the cheapest. Right. Um, and then based on that, we'll look at you know uh, how effectively is that going to solve the problem, and so, usually. So, yeah. So, so, so maybe even like, you know, Cassie, maybe you could d develop sort of a scorecard because I, I, I like that the way Matt's going is so we say, okay, we're going we're gonna to score each one of these on cost, high, low, medium. We're going to score them on, you know, the amount of time it will take to implement high, low, medium. You know, think of a bunch of sort of criteria as like the most fun, high, low, medium. Um, you know, the biggest impact, high, low, medium, and then use that as a way for them to, you know, sort out and pick which one they're going to go after. Yeah, and they, like I said, they are coming up with ideas. Like one was um, on eye surgery cases, I didn't realize there was like 10 medications that they have to mix up. And so they said, why don't we have it already mixed from the pharmacy delivered to us, to us in a box? Well, there you like, go. Let's do it. Yeah. So once the group starts spinning, so then they kind of just do the small Kaizans, you know, do the, I mean, so well, I guess my question is pick the projects of improvements and the impact or the scorecard, but once they get going, because we don't, we want them to to continue on on making things better and easier yeah yeah so so, so generally the the idea is you got this overall metric of reducing operation uh op operating room downtime or or you know improving turnover time between operations um and that's the number that you want to move right now, the fact when you, you know, you do the mixing of the eye medications ahead, you know, ahead of time, you know, I don't know how big an impact that's going to have on that final metric. You need to have some interim sort of goals and maybe you're just going to measure like, you know, number of projects completed, right? And that you're knocking off, like we did, you know, these 12 low-hanging fruit improvements were completed, you know, on time and on budget, right, if you will. So and allow people to celebrate and feel good about those sort of things. But ultimately to keep going, you gotta start showing you know, impact on that, on that major measure that you get. Yeah, just, just to, if I can comment on that, Eric, uh, and uh, I don't know, Cassie, if this is a, like a first, have you performed Kaizen before, I guess, in, in this environment? Participated in them? Mm. I just, this is my first being the lead. So as a, a participant, my participant myself also, one of the most frustrating things, right, is you, you complete the Kaizen, right? And then the team effort energy just drops, right? So the, those improvements, and it's, it's commonly attributed to, we try to bite off more than we can chew. Oh, yeah. so kind of, dual purpose, right? Like Eric's saying, scoping it down, you know, those, those, those final countermeasures or solutions that you want to implement and to something that is actually achievable. And then leveraging that as like a good news share to maybe gain uh, some interest from uh, uh, these individuals that you're having a hard time participate. You know, maybe, you know, what starts that momentum. Uh, we've had a lot of success in that, you know, people getting interest. Oh, you know, we want to participate, we want to go, we want to be in part, you know, and when you have them raising their hand and they want to participate in the Kaizen, that's, that's, that's when you know you have something. Yeah, you get the success stories starting to yeah. roll in and pe people love to be part of a winner, Yeah. right? And if you see this sort of winning momentum, um, you know, you get that buy-in. And it's not, you know, we're making it sound like it's easy or it's going to be perfect. It's going to be hard, Cassie, and, and you're going to get setbacks and, you know, you, uh, you got to sort of fight through it and kind of keep on going. But um, it sounds like you're, you're doing all the right things, and it sounds like you're, you're set up for success, I would think. Yeah, and the team, I have to say, it was, it was interesting to see the team start to team differently and go through the team when they came up. It's kind of like what's in it for them. And it's yeah, yeah. 
if, if it's better and easier regarding how we turn over a room, it's going to make your job better. Like when the anesthesiologist says, well, I have to call pharmacy to prepare for my next case, but I don't have a, I could do it during the net during my surgery of the case or the prior case, but we don't have a phone close by and I have to use my cell phone and I don't, we don't have good reception. So I'm like, okay, how quick could that be? Did I get you a phone? <laughs> well, you know, you know, to, to the degree that it might help and you know, I'll make this offer to all you guys, you know, we're looking for, three case presentations for the Wien Summit in February. And, um, you know, if you got uh, your Kaizen works out really well, Cassie, and you want to take a couple of your, your people up here and you want to come up and, uh, and present, it's only like a 30 minute deal. You talk for 20 minutes and 10 minutes of questions. We, you know, we applaud and cheer, especially if, uh, you know, you know, but it's almost, and I don't know if this is going to be helpful to say it to you or, or, or it's going to tell you, but, um, you know, there's tears in people's eyes sometimes when they hear these you know, operators or, you know, nurse attendants, you know, um, you know, nobody ever asked me, you know, how we can fix this. And, you know, now we feel so much better about our jobs and, you know, those, those are the kind of stories that, that move people, and that's what keeps me sort of coming back and, and working in this world. So, mm -hmm. you know. But you got something like that, you know, bring it up. Okay. Yeah, so that was the big focus of the group was making their jobs during this turnover better and easier. Yeah. right. Okay. Um, well, you know, just keep us posted, you know, and uh, feel free to reach out, you know, if you have any questions or uh, – you know, you, you, you come up against anything, uh, I'm happy to help. It sounds like you're, you're on the right track. Yes, and so they're presenting, they're presenting it, the team's presenting it to the rest of the OR where they've been October 6th. Yeah. So I said this is presenting me. Yeah. No, nah, so good. Good, good. Excellent. Okay, um, let's see, Judy, you got your hand raised? Yeah, I just want to say, Cassie, I appreciate your efforts because I'm undergoing surgery myself personally the 26th of October. Anything that you do to improve the world surgically, uh, including uh, making people's uh, approaches more flexible as opposed to say because we said so, um, then that would be a wonderful thing. It's so much nicer being operated on by happy people, don't you think? Right, <laughs> right. Or as opposed to angry folks. Don't, don't get them all pissed off, Cassie. But, uh, um, so contagious. Yeah, okay, good deal. All right, well, I'm, uh, I'm ready to wrap it up for tonight. Um, everybody lower their hands if they're really lowered, and uh, we're, uh, we're good to go. So I'll see you guys in two weeks. All right, um, try to come up with some good pizza. All right, see you guys later. All right, bye-bye. Hey, 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 Laura, could you stay on for a minute? Yes. Yes, okay, so I get to see you online and everything. I know, finally. <laughs> Been so long. So, um, so everything sort of calmed down with you as far as getting classes and whatnot? You're all set now? Yes, yes, and my schedule's finalized and everything, so no yeah. more surprises. Mm -hmm. And then um, I've kind of um, designated you uh, as the lead with, uh, with Matt Aloha and stuff like that. Is, that, is everything okay there? I, I'm, I'm just sort of a – it's just a huge mess, and, and hopefully it's, it's calmed down now. So Yeah, um, I think it's been fine. I mean, every time, um, like, you guys emails me about, like, the situation, I kind of just forward it on to Matt because um, I really don't know, you know, exactly how to work the system there. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I think it seems to be okay. He's always really, um, yeah. like, fine about it. Yeah, I've, I sent him, I think, five emails yesterday. I was like, sorry again for so many of them. So um, it was nice that he said we could just send out his email to students who maybe haven't received one yet. Okay. Um, so then it cuts back on the back and forth. Okay, yeah, and, I, and I'm sort of behind on my email, so I maybe didn't see that message if I was CC'd on it and stuff. Because one of the things I'm thinking about is I've sort of, with, with regards to, Fullerton and more steam. I was sort of becoming a bottleneck, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody had asked Professor Olson to go to more steam or ask. And what I might do, um, let's try to get smarter about how we 
set up the communication relationship for next quarter. Okay. Right? Somebody will be the first person and we'll just say, if you've got more steam problems, you know, I'll, I'll shoot them to Kara. If it's Fullerton problems, I'll shoot it to you. And, you know, that way it um, would be one less step for me to sort of be uh, choking on there. So Right. All the different outlets. Um, and so this quarter, are there more transactional students? Is that why we're using the Moodle again? No, no there's, there's, so actually we're doing this because we've got two students that are not Cal Poly, right? Oh, okay. Out of 90, right? So it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little bit silly and, and we ought to, you know, we'll, we'll try to pick this up. We'll, we'll create a, an action item to try to get, you know, Cal Poly to do this for this so we don't have to go through Matt. Mm -hmm. Or at least do some investigation so we know what the, uh, you know, what, what's stopping us, right? Right, yeah. But it is, it is a little great. It's, it's, good that, it's good that Matt's being nice, but I also, you know, feel like we're, you know, we're going to wear our welcome at some point there, right? Yeah. yeah, that's why just when I kept finding one student to email to him, I was like, maybe I should compile a list first and then, so just one email, so... Yeah. So, so what do you think on the, um, the survey? Do you, like, that would be... We could do that, but if it's a matter of only, you think there's only like a handful of people left, maybe we just let them self-identify as opposed to burdening all 90 students with a, with a survey, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it might almost just be worth it now to send out an email saying, hey, if you haven't got an email yet, or if you can't log into Fullerton, like email Matt. Um, he handles all of that and will help you out with the situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because I think at this point, yeah, like you said, we kind of found a lot of the students already, so. All right. Um, I, can make, I can make an announcement to that effect in class tomorrow. Um, and then maybe tomorrow afternoon, well, just sort of touch base with me and say, hey, do we still want to send out that message? And then we'll, you know, maybe pull the trigger on that. Okay. okay. Because I'm also conscious, you know, we've got the students now, they've got to do you know, two sessions, or we gave them amnesty on the first two sessions on more steam. So sessions one and two and three and four is due Monday, oh, plus no. the index card, plus the resume, oh, okay. plus, you know, lecture quiz and plus the movie quiz, right? Oh, gosh. So yeah. All that stuff is due on Monday. So they, they could be like in a rebellious mode and throwing one more survey at them will be not good. Yeah. <laughs> if he down, would probably be a good thing, too. Mm -hmm. Might be one too many. Yeah. Uh, Matt did say, though, just one thing about um, if students are emailing him, they have to provide their first and last name and send it from their official email. So I guess Cal, Cal Poly probably. Yeah. Because otherwise he doesn't have all the information. So. Yeah. And, and I think that's sort of another thing. You know, we get that. Um, I put those sort of. I don't know, what do you call them, notes or something at the beginning of the Moodle, mm -hmm. right? Now there's a long thing, do this, 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 this. I think, you know, a little thing that says, always use your, your Cal Poly email and correspondence with me, more steam, and, uh, you know, and Fullerton would be a good thing to get students in the practice of doing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, when, when somebody sends me a Gmail thing um, and I have to send them to more steam, I have to look up what they're real, you know, and it's, yeah one extra step right mm -hmm. okay all right well i'll let you go um thanks for uh sitting through this tonight i appreciate it yeah of course uh, are you okay with doing this uh for the next uh we only got like three more or something is this oh, okay for you? Yeah, that's, mm -hmm, that's good yeah um wednesdays is my shortest day so i'm free during this time okay yeah mm -hmm. so uh if, if you're willing to do it we're willing to pay you great all right i'll take it <laughs> yeah. all right we'll see you laura all right see you bye-bye